as, as I said earlier, we're going to hold our questions and we're just going to move along now to our next speaker. Um, and, I, and I'm going to introduce Marion Higgins now. Marion is the Kildare County Librarian, current president of the Library Association of Ireland. And as we all know, um, our colleagues in the public libraries have been doing great work um, in terms of bringing uh, library services to the communities in this crisis. So we'll hand over to Marion now. Thank you, Marion. So, morning everybody. Um, I just want to start by saying um, my compliments to Cahal and the team and Manuth uh, for organising this event. Um, I suppose um, in the early stages and even now we're working at such a pace and you know days, everything is different every day. So it was good actually to, to be able to stop and to look at you know where we are at the moment, what we've done, what we've done well. So Cahal, thank you for organizing this to make me stop and to think. So uh, my first uh, image there is, um, sorry, everything is going very fast here on me. Uh, my first image there, that's me actually pre-COVID when I had black hair. Uh, as you can see, it's it's got a lot uh, greyer since then. But um, but just to say, public libraries uh, through the years, we have adapted our service in line uh, with technolo technological changes, environmental changes, um, social and economic. Uh, so we are a service that has adapted over the years. But I suppose this situation is just so unique, and I don't think any crystal ball, um, any risk management plan could really have prepared us uh, for what we're going through at the moment. But I would say, and there are a lot of similarities between what Alan said and I think what I'm going to say, because we are resilient, we're innovative, we're solution driven, and, and we are creative. Um, and I think those approaches, they will help us chart a path to, I know people are using the term new normal, I think maybe new horizons. Uh, so I think we have the skill set to actually move forward quite proactively and uh, creatively. So I might add, I have now updated my risk management plan and um, I haven't had all the risk mitigation factors yet, but they will come, but it's very much a, a work in progress. So this, this is me um, at the start of COVID. Um, and I'm sure many of you were a bit like me there and uh, I had lots and lots, needless to say, going through my head and things were changing at such a rate. But if I was to classify those thoughts, um, I could really put them into five areas. So staff well-being, and staff needless to say were hugely anxious and still are in this uh, period. But really what I wanted to do was to work to their strengths. Communicating with our community, our citizens, how would you, we would continue to deliver services, uh, new innovative approaches to delivering these services. And um, what new areas maybe could we move into? I saw Alan said there, you know, I don't like maybe using the word opportunity, but there were um, there were potentials to move into other areas here. Um, and then I think at lastly, the strategic positioning of our libraries. So what in what will be a very different world. So I suppose they were generally my, my thoughts. So I have a nice little furry uh, friend here who has a poor little lizard uh, by the head. But just to say, uh, as regards to our staff, people react differently in stressful situations. Uh, that's the nature of mankind, it's the nature of the beast. Um, and some people, you had scenarios where they were so stressed, they were nearly taking the heads off other people, which is really not to be recommended. I saw very little of that, but then you had the other extreme where people became very introverted. So you had various different dynamics going on. So communications became really, really essential. Um, but I would say, like, say in Kildare, we've over 100 staff. So, you know, lots of understanding, listening, empathy were needed during this period. And personal circumstances uh, for people, they pe became aggravated with COVID. So, you know, all of this, um, all these nuances, they all had to be taken into 
into account. Um, so communications, as I said, really important. And I remember in January asking a colleague to make sure we had the personal phone numbers and emails for all our staff because I suppose I did have a crystal ball and it was telling me at some stage the doors are going to close. So we wanted to be in a position that we could communicate with our staff. So, so actually, fortunately, we did have all of those ways to communicate with people. And that made such a difference because every week we can send out emails and update our staff and send them information on resources on well-being and, uh, you know, and to tell them what's happening within the service, etc. And I suppose at the moment um, we're actually preparing to, uh, uh, let's say, reopen uh, the 8th of June. So, you know, so it's really important that communications um, are there to tell the staff what's happening. But what I felt to be of most benefit at all uh, once we, we had our system in place was to give staff a purpose, a role they could play. So whether that was working on social media, creating content, promoting our service, working on community response, this purpose, it gave a structure, it gave a routine, and in some sense, it actually gave normality, and which was really important. We were in a very unusual situation and normality to, and some sense of normality was just so important. So once her staff has had a purpose, I felt it was important to give creative freedom, especially in that content creation. And I know all my colleagues around the country were similar. So there was absolutely, uh, staff had that creative freedom to express uh, and to take the service in different routes. So I have to say, and I, I just want to say on the record here, I'm usually proud of my staff in Kildare because they have been so innovative and creative in the approach that they have taken. And many other library authorities have taken opportunities uh, to engage in significant training and development during this period. And a recently organized LGMA Libraries Development Town Hall style web, uh, webinar saw a participation rate of just under 500 and colleagues around the country got the opportunity to virtually network which is just so important at the moment. And then in Wexford for example uh, staff undertook 700 hours of online training throughout April. So most importantly these training opportunities they will allow staff to develop and hone their new skills which will improve on our services moving forward. So communication and again we really, Alan and myself, there's a lot of similarities going on here you know. So in the early stages um, of Covid um, I was conscious that we really could be operating behind closed doors for some time. So how would we communicate with our members, our citizens, our communities? So only in February um, did we have this mar marvellous coming together of the public library sector, uh, the Department of Rural and Community Development and Libraries uh, Development LGMA. And we ran a really successful marketing campaign to promote library services. And, you know, in Kildare on that same day when we had a national um, uh, library day, we opened uh, a refurbished library. And, you know, it, it, it nearly broke my heart to have to close that very quickly after just opening it. But again, you know, um, the psychology um, of going from a high of coming from such a successful uh, campaign to then, you know, the psychology of closing doors of libraries, which so goes against the grain of what we um, as a profession um, are about. So the question was, how would we keep the conversation going? And social media, and Alan referred to this as well, it really paid, played a key role. And in Kildare, there has been a noticeable increase in our messaging on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And all library authorities are engaging heavily with our communities in this way. So that this messaging would become so important in the national approach to combat fake news and to relay consistent, reliable sources of information about COVID-19. Supports for businesses, supports for community via community uh, response, social welfare, critical public health information and well-being supports. So in, in Kildare, just to give a flavour, um, social media, we posted over 24 online story times 
in the month of April alone, um, including my own, where I um, had my uncooperative dog Watson helping me, and he's now famous. But in total, there were over eight and a half thousand views in April of, of our, just Kildare's uh, story time. So that just shows you, if you multiply that across the country, that's quite a sizable amount um, of activity. We set up a Facebook club there just very recently, and we already have 95 members uh, there. Our tweets uh, went up about 83%. And in Kildare, actually, we were doing a lot of tweeting prior to this. So that shows actually that figure is actually uh, uh, quite um, significant. And um, then in April, we stepped into the world of blogging, and we really have a great team in Kildare, and uh, they threw themselves into the world of blogging, needless to say. So uh, that was set up uh, in the middle of April, and just the stats from April alone, we had 670 um, visitors uh, from 19 different countries, which is really interesting, with two and a half thousand page views. Uh, we've published over 50 posts um, from book reviews to craft tutorials. But what it does show is our, our reach, actually, um, you know, to, to, to reach out to 19 different countries, you know, that in itself is actually um, very interesting to take into context with the whole social media. So our communication channels, they did allow us to relay information on our services, how to join online, content information, Zoom classes, and most importantly, again, to relay that correct information. But each library authority, we spread our message via multiple communication tools. So from radio interviews to press and local press. Um, in Kildare, we fine-tuned our newsletter, Clever Reach. So we actually were able to target 20, over 20,000 households in County Kildare alone. And actually that became a factor with Kildare County Council because that uh, vehicle was used to send out information from a, a council perspective as well as a library perspective. I might add as well, there was a very conscious decision in Kildare to keep a light tone to our communications. And this light, friendly and humorous tone, it actually has been commented on by our citizens. And in a time when people are anxious, a lighter tone is really important. So our physical, our physical resources and uh, our e-resources. Uh, so with our physical resources and programs unable um, to access, it was vital then we adapted to uh, the challenge. So this is quick, this isn't uh, included expanding the scope of our online services. And it does illustrate how quickly we responded and how flexible we were in terms of offering alternative service options. And, while we can't offer the public our normal services, uh, we can look at this as a chance to offer something different, allowing our frontline staff, and this is really important again, to showcase their creativity whilst working remotely. So our e-services have allowed our communities to keep accessing a huge amount of digital content for education, work and entertainment. Uh, those who aren't members already can now become an online member by completing the registration on the Library Ireland uh, website. Um, and our, all new members get access to our online resources uh, without having to join uh, in branch. And that, that was just so important. It was a huge obstacle and that was overcome at the click of a switch. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it is usually a positive uh, development um, and, uh, you know, it was implemented during a difficult period, you know. But just to give an idea of the stats, um, according to the Department of Rural and Community Development, almost double the amount of new library memberships were taken out when you compare the month of March 2019 to, to March 2020. So there are 30,000 new members in March 2020, as opposed to 17,000 in the previous um, year. And if you just generally look at the figures, uh, if you compare the week of the 29th of March to the week of the 1st of March, there was a 467% increase in e-learning courses, which is hugely significant, a 313% increase in the usage of new books. All of those figures are hugely increased. And those stats are even more impressive because the e-service usage prior to COVID was actually increasing month on month. So in response to this demand uh, for online services, the Department of Rural and Community Development allocated a much appreciated 200,000 to purchase new books, our new e-books and audio books. 
And Dublin City have played a key role, um, and that has to be acknowledged at this stage because they made sure the LMS system, uh, you know, it, it worked perfectly during the period and they streamlined uh, online membership. So, um, so thank you to Dublin City. So um, online programming, I suppose in recent years, public libraries have made huge strides in the early areas of programming. And now with libraries closed and that face-to-face -face programming canceled, public libraries, we really had to look at innovative ways to host these events virtually. So in the last number of weeks, staff have all had a crash course and we all have had a crash course, I might add, in, in Zoom and similar technologies uh, to deliver content to our audiences remotely. So uh, this includes varieties of lectures, um, uh, workshops on offer to promote communication and collaborations. But it also provides an opportunity for the public to learn, take care of their physical and mental health, and most importantly, make the most of their time and to take as much enjoyment as they can from the free content available. So like in Kildare, you, you can see the eclectic mix there, and there really is something for absolutely everybody. And our Irish language um, enthusiasts we have included uh, something for them. So really very wide uh, variety of activities going on. Some and quite a lot of them allow an interactive element. And I suppose it was that interactive element that we were actually trying to um, replicate as well, and we did. So in Kildare, we had built up several successful programs as well, such as toys, technology and training. So again, we were looking, well, how can we actually replicate that virtual um, experience? And we actually have done that as well and run a series of workshops in those areas. And I would say the participation rates in all of these workshops, it has been really um, high and pretty much they book out straight away. So then I suppose we've moved into areas as well that are, I suppose, outside of our normal remit. And um, so if you look at, um, let's say, the community uh, resource uh, area, um, so these have been established in each county. And in Kildare, our county council working in partnership with COVID, uh, Kildare Community Response, um, ha have actually set this up. So um, in Kildare, I was tasked along with my colleague from the community department to set this up. So this is a service that uh, supports people who are vulnerable and cocooning in the service to provide services and supports. And libraries are playing a, a key role um, in this uh, service, uh, which is hugely significant for us going forward. And um, as I said, our library staff are taking the calls in Kildare and in min many other counties. And funny, um, library staff have adapted to this new role with ease. And you know, the many years experience working, uh, supporting the information needs of our members, it really has reinforced our skill strength uh, to providing a service such as this. Um, and I know my colleagues around the country um, who have been involved in this service. Um, but what is important here that invaluable strategic new connections to agencies and organisations have, have also uh, been nurtured here and that will be of huge strategic importance to us moving forward. On the right here we have um, our cocooning uh, book delivery service and a number of library authorities around the country, Cork, Dunleary, Wexford, Leash, Carlow um, and Kildare, uh, we have Sorry, just checking out. Um, so we've actually all developed uh, this service. It's a free book delivery service. And, you know, we wanted to make sure we re removed all barriers. So whether you were a member or whether, whether you were not a member, it didn't matter. You could actually have available this service. So just hugely important for those in our community who are cocooning and vulnerable that they would have uh, supports to help them through their, their time. Uh, so the, the service... Um, it uh, was enabled uh, by um, the timely recommendations of libraries development to the LGMA, uh, so um, on recommendations on how to handle library material. So in many counties, this service has been delivered through the County Council's community response. Um, and it, it really, it's a very successful uh, service. I suppose on the day we actually launched it, um, we launched it on the 1st of May and by one o'clock that day uh, we had 51 requests already in. So it, it really has been hugely uh, positive. But, you know, I suppose we hope it, for, it, it allows some form of escapism for those dealing with challenging and isolating circumstances.
and circumstances and to help them you know in their in their um, anxious period um, you know so because uh, it's very tough for people out there at the moment um but uh but i mean other services actually have uh, sort of gone different taken different approaches to this and in Dunleary they actually uh, went one step forward for, further and they developed an app an app based dynamic piece to manage the actual book service so and that actually uh, will be you know a system that will help um, you know and can be actually replicated in other counties um, and i might add actually during this period what is significant is each library authority we're all testing different systems you know and, and some are working some are, are not working but the ones that will work we'll be able to use those um, and replicate um, across the country as well which is uh, really an important point to be made and then another let's say counties such as wexford they actually uh, went a step forward with their uh, uh, touch type read and spell licenses. So I suppose there was a consciousness of children who have more significant learning needs. How can we support them? So they, they made those licenses available to, for the children to access from their home. And the librarians have been working with the parents and the children to make sure that they have the supports that they need for this. So I suppose that's bringing me now, I'm nearing my end. I'm conscious I have 20 minutes and I'm talking very fast. But um, again, face, uh, face shields. And I suppose if I, if I was to put a heading on, on this uh, slide, you know, a year ago, I never would have thought we would have been doing some of these things, you know. Um, but, uh, but I suppose uh, along with our other library services around the country, uh, Kildare Library Services provided their 3D printers to Surfbox to, uh, to um, produce uh, face masks. And as, as you can see, uh, uh, similar to the academic, there was huge uh, positivity, a huge social media presence um, from this. And um, Angela there, as you see, uh, was on RT News and featured on Primetime as well. So, you know, a hugely positive story. I suppose some very small things as well, you know, in the very early stages when our libraries closed and there were the change, changes to the benefit assistance, you know, a very simple um, action in our public libraries that we printed the COVID benefit forms and we actually put them in places, you know, in the towns or outside our libraries so people could pick them up because there was a contract that people did not have access to printing and that actually was a problem so that was a very simple uh, simple action but it actually meant an awful lot to people so we are printing huge reams I might add of those forms in the early stages like the academic a number of our public libraries uh, staff they were in the contact tracing area as well you know and um, so they put their information retrieval skills to support the health the Irish health and the social social services as well and um, so I suppose um, uh, in conclusion I suppose I said at the beginning when I had all these thoughts going through my head, one of the thoughts was when we, we how to position ourselves uh, during this period. And I know other services, it, it's like they close the doors and, you know, took, took a break. Um, but uh, I can safely say public libraries and academic libraries and all libraries, we really have not done that at all. Uh, you know, and the strategic positioning of our libraries during this period was really important. I think at the early stages when services were being classified as essential and non-essential, libraries and despite what we think we were considered non-essential so in my head that said to me well i really needed to advocate and to position our service so that when the axe comes down and um, and i'm sure it will and i hate to be negative um but uh, we will have done our level best to hold our own and to show our true worth um, and i think that was you is hugely important at the moment and um, so it's essential therefore and um, that library services we do voice um, our role and what we're doing at the moment and um, i would say libraries we have maintained such a strong presence during covid uh, 19 um, and we even um, got a mention by on Taoiseach in an earlier speech uh, many county councils, you know, they're engaged in community response. Um, I've mentioned uh, 3D printing and um, I, I mentioned, you know, the social media and all the, all, all the online activity. So, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of constantly sort of, you know, uh, working to our communities at this moment in time and communicating the message. We are closed, but we're not closed, a bit like Boris Johnston. 
is so important during these strange times. A, a lady actually uh, contacted us about our cocooning service and her daughters in Australia and New Zealand had told her about her service. Ironically, uh, they had heard about the service on our local radio KFM. So it just goes to show that, you know, good news can travel fast. So I hope, I hope you'll agree that um, public libraries, we have taken a novel approach, we've taken an energetic approach to the challenges that we currently face. And, and we have shown how innovative and how creative and how strategic we have been um, by providing and adapting and tailoring our service to our members. The impressive engagement with our online events, the views on our social media channels, the interest shown in the new cocooning service, they all show the value that people place in libraries and how vital they are. And they do indicate how much you know, people miss our service and our staff, and indeed we very much miss them too. So just finally, it's a real credit to everybody working in libraries to see how, as it's a sector, we have adapted to the current situation and are adapting and remain a steadfast an invaluable resource for our communities at this difficult time. I don't have a crystal ball, but I do feel confident to say that when we are back to our new normal, we will be looking at what we've gained from this experience and how it can change our future delivery of service to our patrons in the years to come for the better. Thank you.